Someone has just splashed out 200 million in January and we play Arsenal today. Stay tuned. Hello guys, welcome back to Chelsea's Millions. We are on to episode 10 today and we'll be going up against Arsenal in the league. We'll also take a look at the transfers that happened during the January transfer window that has just slammed shut. Spoiler, we haven't brought anyone but a certain team spent over 200 million. So if we have a quick look at our recent form, we've got five games down here, Man City, Southampton, Wolves, Bournemouth and Everton. We've got five wins. The Bournemouth game was a draw, but it was a win because it was an aggregate victory. So let's have a look at how them results have come through. So you were last with us for the Manchester United win, and since then it's been all green apart from that Bournemouth game. That was still counting as a green because it was an aggregate victory. So we went through in the FA Cup 4-2 winners against Fulham. Nice easy victory. We then beat Bournemouth with a pretty strong side in the first leg of the Carabao Cup. Idea was play a strong side in the first leg, get the job done and then the second leg we can rest players. And then we went on a storming run through the Premier League as we have done all season. 4-0 against Fulham, 3-0 against West Ham. We then had Man City visit us at Stamford Bridge where we picked up a 3-0 win over them. Picked up a 2-0 win over Southampton before we played Wolves in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Another win there saw us progress to the fifth round where we'll be playing Tottenham later on. We then played the Bournemouth game and just before we kicked off now we played Everton where we picked up a 2-0 win there. Haaland and Werner both on the score sheet. So this transfer window wasn't a complete washout for us. We did try to make a sign-in. We wanted to bring this guy in, Owen Wichnadal, but AZ just ain't selling. Now after scouting him, we've got estimated cost there of do not want to sell, but when I went to make the sign-in, his contract actually says minimum release fee, 65 million. I don't want to hit that 65 million minimum release fee in all honesty. So what I'm hoping throughout these next three or four months before the next transfer window opens is we unsettle him enough for him to hand in a transfer request. I will be looking for him to come in as backup to Chilwell and then we can move Emerson on. So we spoke about the transfer window and someone spending over 200 million and it was Man City. First off, I went and splashed 109 million on Martinez. I'm sure everyone's come across this guy. He's a fantastic striker, starts his career at Inter. He always goes on to be at one of the top sides, and he is a top striker. So it's not going to be a bad move by any stretch of the imagination. As you can see, we made a scout report on him at one point, and we got a 90% he would fit into the team. We decided on Haaland instead, just through the fact we could get Haaland on the release clause. They then went and stole this player, Everton Kablia. I'm not sure how you say that, so we're going to call him Everton from SLB, so Benfica. Looks like a good young prospect. 25 at the moment, so I don't think he's going to improve all too much. Again, as he was scouted by ourselves, 65, so he wasn't going to fit too much into our team. He'd have been quite some way behind, fifth place in the pecking order. But obviously City have seen something in him that's going to increase their team. That's 60 million they spent on them, and then 52 million on Marco Asensio. So you can see how they've hit this 221 million malarkey. And they said that COVID was going to stop teams spending like nutters. So taking a look at our history in the transfer market, we've not actually had any ins in this month. And the only outs we've had have all been loan deals just to try and improve players. So nothing really to write home about there. So some news to run through as well since last time you were here. Donnarumma and Haaland made it into the World eleven. Both on the pitch, Haaland the striker and Donnarumma in goal. Donnarumma was also named World Goalkeeper of the Year. Just 31 conceded in 56 appearances. 
and a massive 32 clean sheets. That's awesome. And Haaland was named the World Footballer of the Year. Massive achievement for him. And he also picked up the Ballon d'Or as well as the Young Player of the Year. Pretty much any award that could have went out, Haaland picked up. Not bad for signing for £60 million, was it? So you join us for the Arsenal game now. As you can see, a few teams have already kicked off today and finished their games. Man United beating Leicester for one. Everton beat Liverpool 2-1 at Goodison Park. A 94th minute goal from Davis there, putting Liverpool down. That leaves us five points clear of Manchester United with two games in hand on them. So a win today will really start cementing our outlook for this Premier League title this season. So the team we're going to go with is a pretty much full strength team. The one major miss though is there's no Donnarama. He has picked up a virus that's keeping him out for 12 to 14 days. Maybe he got COVID. <laughs> so Mendy's in goal. James Tamori, Skriniar and Chilwell is our normal back line. In the midfield three, we've got Valverde, Mount and Havertz, who have really started playing well together. Sancho, Werner and Haaland are our front three. And remember how last time I said Havertz was maybe not so good? Well, just lately, he seems to have found a little bit of form. So after that United game, we got two assists, two assists again. A 7.3, a goal, a 7 rating, and then a couple of 6.8s. So, what I have done, we have switched the position up, though, from an advanced playmaker on support to an advanced playmaker on attack, so he can get forward a little bit more. Maybe it's just doing the job it needs to do. So, the team sheets are in. Just have a quick flick through Arsenal's team sheet, as we always do. Leno holding... Garcia, Eric Garcia coming into Arsenal. He has joined them from PSG on loan for the rest of the season. Obviously a defender we were looking at at one point when he was released by Man City. Maitland-Niles is in there. They've got Christophe Abdur in there now. And Lorenzo Pellegrini. They've really upgraded this squad. And Milik up front. They really have. We're going to have to be careful of this. Pick up where you left off last time out. And... All gathered, ready to go. Have a little bit of a chat and see how it goes. Expectations from this game. We've been on such a good run. I am expecting a close fault win, if not a draw, to be honest with you. Not thinking we're going to lose this game. I'm pretty confident we'll be all right there, but... It's been such a good run. At some point, the run is going to stop. And when it does stop, I'm just hoping we continue to bounce back. But for this first 20 minutes, nothing at all is happening. No shots. No, no fouls. No corners. Everything's really limited on what's going on. We've had a shot there. I'm going to chuck a shout in to encourage the players. It's got a few green faces down the bottom, so that's good. So we're pretty much at full strength. The only uh, niggle we've got is Mendy in goal instead of Donnarumma. But again, Mendy kept, what, 30 clean sheets last season for us. So I'm not in any worries really about having Mendy in goal. Certainly happier with him there rather than Kepa. But this game is so even at the moment. It's just not really going anywhere. Let's demand more just before half time. That has fired everyone up a little bit. But again, Arsenal probably just shading the game at the moment. There's nothing that can really go wrong. So the first highlight of the game here, Garcia plays the ball through. Pellegrini's got it outside our box. He's looked for the overlap and found Tierley into the box. It's headed away by Chilwell. Pellegrini will bring that down. Ajir. Pellegrini. Ajir. Come on. 
Someone get in there and get that ball back. Maitland Niles making a run at goal here. He's gone past his man and took the shot. He's gone straight across the goal there. We've got away with one there. Not the greatest of first halves from us. And I'm wondering whether to drop back to a cautious mentality in the second half and draw them onto us a little bit because this isn't working. You can see from the expected goals, it's been even all the way through and when a team has took charge, it's been Arsenal that's taken charge. We go in the dressing room, hands on hips, not happy with the performance I've seen and that's motivated everyone. And we're going to switch the positive to a cautious mentality for the start of this second half. Hoping we can catch him on the break. We've got fast players up front. I mean, Werner, Sancho and Haaland have all got 16, 17 pace. As well as strong acceleration. So it's only going to take a ball over the top to get them through. So everyone's still looking happy at the minute. Energetic. Let's chuck another shell up there. We're going to fire them up now. I've hit the hour mark. It's made a couple of them happy and a couple of them sad. <laughs> Come on, I don't want a nil-nil today. This is terrible. There is just no highlights coming through. We're going to make a change. Let's have a look. Who can we make changes with? So, Haaland's having a terrible game up front. But Werner is as well. But is that just because we're not getting the ball forward at all? I am going to get Havertz off and bring Graven Birch on. He's done really well this season, Graven Birch. I want to bring Fatty on, but at the same time, can I really bring Werner off? I'm going to do it. Werner is not creating. Werner is sort of running into Coldy Saxon, not getting anywhere out of it. Let's try that. I wonder whether to try attacking them then. I mean, we can afford to lose this game and it's not going to have an effect on us. We'll still be five points clear of United and we'll still have a game in hand. Let's go attack him. This isn't working. Go attack him and we'll fire him up again. Come on, this is a derby, boys. We don't expect derbies to be going like this. I mean, there's just nothing happening. Who else have we got on the bench? Loftus Cheek, Kante. No one that's really going to make a massive difference. Mount's having a good game. I'm going to bring Mount off for Kofovic. Maybe he can just do something different. And all that time, I've just noticed the cautious mentality was still set. I never actually switched over to the attacking mentality. That's probably what's just caused it. Well, this looks like a ball draw. I am sorry about that. It's a point towards the league title. I think that's the best we can say about it. I am going to go in there. I'm going to point my finger and tell them, simply put, that was not good enough. And that's moted everyone for the next game. So that's how it leaves the league table after that. We're six points clear of Manchester United with a game in hand. We are also eight points clear of Liverpool, who are on the same games as us. Arsenal are a massive 18 points behind us, although they do have a game in hand, but I can't see Arsenal catching us. I'd say the only chance there is is probably Liverpool if they were to win their game in hand and get to within five points of us. But I'm feeling fairly confident about the league. Confirmation of a 21 match unbeaten run for us following that 0-0 draw. And look at all these clean sheets in there. You love to see that, don't you? 
one conceded against Leicester, then more clean sheets, and then one conceded against Villa. That is something quite magnificent. Quick look at the competitions. So Premier Division, Haaland top goal scorer in there with 21 goals. Chilwell was up there with 7.46 average rating. Got no one in the assists. This is something that we need to find out where we're going wrong because we're not getting that many assists. Man of the match award goes for Chilwell. Donnarumma's got 21 clean sheets. And we've already spoke about the league table. Cup competitions, Real Madrid in the Champions League, which we spoke about last time. We've got Tottenham in the next round of the FA Cup. And we will play Arsenal in the Carabao Cup final on the 27th of February. As far as the next time I will be with you, I think we will do the Real Madrid game, the second leg, to see if we qualify to the next stage of the Champions League. For now, guys, we're going to leave it there. Just so you can see this, you've got the manager performance at a B still. So we're looking really good there. We've got 74 million in the transfer kitty. And up next, we play Newcastle. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed that, please leave us a great big thumbs up. We really help support the channel. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. For now, I'll see you again soon.